Hello and welcome back to our quiz game show series. In the last episode, we set up the UI ready to show our questions, but we have not got a game yet. So let's start work on the game flow using the game modes, player controllers, and extra strings like that on our game world. So let's take a look and see how this is achieved. So here we are in our project again, and I'm gonna go into my content drawer and we will make a game folder for this and in here i'm going to create a folder for the system and the system is going to contain things like the game mode so i'm going to do game mode quiz and we also want to do things like controllers things like that too so let's do a player controller pc quiz and we can also do Another one, we're going to make this multiplayer eventually. So we're going to do PS, not PS, player start state, player state, and do PS uh, quiz for the player state. And the player state is where we're going to store things like the points that each player has earned, for example. And do that there. And we'll also do one for game state as well. It's pretty handy to have right now. May not need it, but we'll put it in there anyway. So now I need to make my game mode use all these instead. So if we go to game mode, we're going to go over to the right hand side and change the game state to R1, the player controller to R1, the player state to R1. And in a default pawn class, we're going to have none. So I'm going to spawn any pawn. Compile and do that. Now I want the game to use that game mode. So I'm going to go to edit product settings. Go to maps and modes and change the default game mode to GM quiz. Okay, so that will handle that. On the PC quiz, the player controller, we're going to go inside of here and we're going to do show mouse cursor and we're going to change the input mode of this to be uh, UI only. So on my event graph, we're going to do begin play and do set input mode to UI only by controller we set to self okay next up we want it to display the quiz screen on the hud now to access the hud we need a hud class and various other things like that you could do it elsewhere but we're gonna do it in the hud class so each player controller gets to see this so we go to blueprint class and search for hud and do HUD quiz and HUD quiz on begin play is going to create the widget for the game screen, the game HUD there. And we're going to promote that to Pebble HUD and add to viewport. Okay. Now, because we made our own HUD class, we do need to go back to our game mode and set the HUD class here to be our one there. Okay. Okay, so next up, we want it to uh, just start displaying stuff for us to click on and do things. But for that to work, we need to go into our game HUD and set that up. So let's go into our game HUD. So in the game HUD, I know originally I wanted to do this sort of switch right here, but I think I'm going to change it up a little bit. So I'm going to delete this from here and hit compile and save that there. And this will instead contain like the, each player's score and things like that. So this will just need a canvas panel. And I'll leave it blank for now. I'll come back to that in a minute. Next, we're going to go back to our HUD class over here. And in the HUD class, we're going to add a function to uh, ask the question. Ask question. And the question it's going to ask is going to be the data asset. So DA question. There you go. And there's the question. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to do create widget. And we're going to choose the question screen. And as you ask for which question we want, we can plug that into there. And because it's going to fill up the whole entire screen, we're just going to add to viewport. So before I do that, on return value here, promote to verbal and do current 
question widget and then add to viewport. Okay, so we've got the functionality all set up there. All we need to do now is make it so that the game will start ask, asking these questions. And that's going to be handled by the game mode in being in control of it. Because it can be multiplayer eventually. The game mode needs to be the one that controls which question gets chosen and then gets sent across to everyone else. So what we're going to do is going to go into the game mode. And in here, we're going to have the some event and this one is going to be ask question but before we ask a question we want to take the possible questions we want and shuffle them so in here we're going to do another custom event in here begin category and at the start of the category we, well first of all we want to know what the category is so let's go input here the a category Oh, I put in the wrong one. Begin category. There you go. Category. And in the category here, I want to store this as a promote available as a current category. Um, and then I want to take the questions pool out of it. Question pool. And I want to randomize or shuffle that up there but again like similar with the multiple choice questions you can't really shuffle an array which belongs to a read only object so what we're going to do here is store that here as current question pool and shuffle that instead okay there we go shuffled and then i want to ask a question but to ask a question, I need to know what question number we're on. So we only answer a certain number of questions. So on the variables here, current question index. We'll do a integer. And we're going to do ask question, take the question pool, get the index from the question pool there. And now we've got the question in that we want to do. And the question we want to do is going to be sent across to all the players. So the problem you have with game mode is that the game mode is only available to the server, not all the players. So how do you actually do this? Well, we can access the player states to do this. And you can get that from the game state. So we're going to do get game state. Get the player array. Then from the player array, we're going to go for each player. I tell them to ask the question. And then from the array element, from the player array, we're going to get the player controller. From the player controller, we can get the HUD. From the HUD, we want to cast to our particular HUD. Cast to HUD quiz. Plug that into loop body. And on the HUD quiz here, we're going to do ask question. And the question pool being set to there. There. So back on the game mode for the quiz, on begin category, we want to call the ask question. So let's just do ask question there. And then to start things all off, we're going to do a post login event, which basically is like begin play sort of essentially for the game mode. Basically, when a player has connected, it will do this. And what we're going to do is just do a begin category. And choose our history category. So when I push play, you see it come up on the screen. Okay. And because it's randomizing and shuffling, what we should hopefully see is that everyone should get the same question too. And to test this for multiplayer to make sure everyone gets the same question, there's a few things we need to do. First of all, the post login, we don't want it to just begin category every time someone will log in because we just don't want to do it once, okay, um, for the main server. So this will be a do once here. For now, that will happen there. But more importantly, 
we it was not going to be automatically doing this. So this is just a, for us testing. This is temporary. Okay, so temporary while we're testing things out. So in here, we're going to do a delay to wait for long enough for everyone to connect and be okay. In the real game, when it's finished, the players will be already connected before we even start the category. So do not worry about that. But in this case, we're not doing that bit yet. So temporarily, we've got this test set up. So in three seconds, it will do once, begin category, and off it goes. Now, when it goes through, that's going to go for all the player array and then tell the HUD to ask the question. Okay, so the problem we have at the moment is we want it to ask question for every one in the game. Now, at the moment, we're accessing the HUD quiz element. Uh, HUD quiz element is strange in the sense that it does not have a network owner. It only exists on your local machine, okay? So you can't access this from everywhere else. But you can access the player controller, which in turn can access the HUDs. So we need to put in the ask question function, essentially, in the player controller. So let's go to the player controller. And we're going to go ahead and make an event in here. Ask question. And in here, we're going to do get HUD. Ask to our HUD quiz. And take to ask question. You see here, it's asking for what question. That's going to come in from the event. But more importantly, the event here needs to be set to replicate on owning client. So the client will get this command and they'll be told to tell their HUD to show the question correctly. So that'll show the question. If I go back to the game mode, well, rather than going to the HUD here, I'm going to delete that and delete that bit and get the player controller from the player states, cast to the player controller, and then go ask question. And put that across to that. I'll save. And now to test this out, hopefully we'll see the server and client have the same question on the screen. And what's ancient civilization of the Pima's built Giza? Okay, so now we can see they've got the same question. However, they do not have the exact same answers. The answers are the same, but in different orders. And that's because the shuffling part is happening on the UI side. And UI in, is only happening on the client. So we need to make that shuffle part happen outside of there to make it more consistent for every other player in the game. So we're going to do that in the next part. So as I said, in the next part, we're going to go ahead and fix up the multiplayer shuffling of the answers available to the player. So you can see that next part right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find many of my videos early before anyone else from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Make sure you stay subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.